Good morning. I'm making a new video because Minitab has dramatically updated their browser, their web browser. So um, all of this is inside the browser when you go to app.minitab.com. Um, so everything that I'm doing is not with the installed app, but with app.minitab.com. And uh, so they've reworked everything. And I want to show you around and how to do everything that you need to do for project one in this video, including those who are creating Minitab and for those who are using Minitab to copy and paste um, their parts from the report. So whether or not you're, you're the one who is assigned Minitab or if you're the one who's assigned the report part, you should watch this full video because you should know how your group member created Minitab Really, you should recreate it to make sure everything was done correctly um, because it's your grade for that too, right? And, uh, and then you definitely want to watch the parts that will be interspersed in here that uh, say this is how you copy and paste and, and do things. So first off, if you are opening an existing file, um, then you would click on Open File and you would select whichever .mpx file that you wanted to open that um, was previously created by somebody else. Uh, and for the individual mini tab, I create the file and you download it from D2L. Um, for the group projects, if you're the report person, your team member who did mini tab has created mini tab for you. And so you'll download their version of mini tab. Um, and, that they created, their mini tab file that they created, and it'll probably look something like this with project one underscore the group name dot mpx, and, and so you would open it that way. If you are the person who is creating the mini tab file for your group and you, you've not done anything yet, then you want to open a completely blank project. Um, and you will uh, hopefully copy and paste your ages and your status. So we'll do age for the variable um, right here and status for the variable right here. Um, and you'll want, I'm just going to make up some um, ages. Um, oops, I meant that to be <laughs> two separate ages. Um, that he would be older than Methuselah, right? And then uh, for um, status, we'll say freshman, um, sophomore, junior. Oh, well, just sophomore twice, junior. Um, and you'll want to make sure that you're spelling these correctly or that you're spelling them all the same way. Um, because um, it will count them wrong if you don't. And the easiest way to make sure you've done it all correctly um, is I'll show that to you when we get there. But when you look at the tallies, um, when we create those, you'll be able to see if you have two sophomores, then you've put a, an extra space somewhere or you've misspelled one of them. Or at least spell them differently. So now we want to um, go to the navigator and uh, in the navigator we want to create a new report and in the new report we want to insert a row and in the row we want to insert annotation and then we will um, paste this from the instructions and we're going to put our group name here. So I'll say group one, but whatever your group, if you're group two or three or four, you'll put that. Um, and then list of group members. I'm only going to put myself, um, but you, well, I, I'll go ahead and, oh, actually, maybe not. Um, I'll go ahead and do um, my husband too. We'll put Thomas on there too, a team of two. But you put your whole group, list them out, um, just their names there. Um, and then you won't have to change that, and you won't have to change that. You do want to change the due date, though, 
Um, so uh, the due date um, you might say is, uh, I think that might be the due date, but you will check um, and be sure that that's the due date. So, and then that's that part. Um, the rest follows the instructions pretty closely. Um, really, I've already gone and done two. Um, hopefully you can copy and paste um, stuff, but if not, you can, you know, worst case scenario, type the the ages that your colleagues have given you. So if you have four group members, then hopefully you have 40 ages, each group member contributing 10 ages. Um, if you have five group members, 50, three group members, 30, hopefully you have more than three though. Um, six group members, 60, uh, and that's probably about, about it. And then we want to do the basic statistics. So stat, and then basic statistics, and then display descriptive statistics. And then um, I select age, and then I hit select. And then I'm going to hit statistics here. And I am going to select several things. So... I want to check the interquartile range, mode range, interquartile range, mode range, and skewness. Where did skewness go? There it is. So interquartile range, mode range, and skewness. And then I want to uncheck in missing and SE of mean. And I'm following the instructions um, pretty much as they're written. I will update the instructions soon, by the way, um, but that may not be today. Uh, so that the instructions match the new mini tab. Okay, so I think we're good there. And then we um, go to graphs and I want to select histogram and box plot. Now, if you selected the width normal curve, that's not going to be the worst thing in the world, but understand it's going to put a perfectly normal curve there. That doesn't mean your data is normal. That means the curve it drew on top of your data is normal. Your data will be the bars. That's the histogram. So the bars are your data, and if the bars perfectly match the blue curve that it would draw, let's go ahead and do it and I'll show it to you. Um, we'll do all three of them, but you you want to do one of the two histograms and a box plot. So, um, yep, okay. Um, so this is all of our stuff right here, um, all of the stats that we want. This is the regular histogram. This is what our data is. Um, and this is the histogram that's drawn the curve, and it's red this time, not blue. Um, and we can see our bars do not match this curve. So if they did, our bar heights would be shallow here, and then they would be this height here instead of this height. Um, and then this one would be a little taller. This one's probably about right. Um, and this one would be shorter. Um, so, and, and we wouldn't have these blanks here and here. Um, so it's, it's very different. Of course, I only have a tiny bit of data that I completely made up, so. Um, we don't expect it to be normal, but um, that that just tells you what your data would look like if it were normal. And then uh, here is the box plot. Um, if we are, if you are the report person and you want to copy, then what you want to do is you want to, um, you know, maybe select the table so that you can you can copy it, and then copy table. Um, and then you'll want to have a Microsoft Word document opened and uh, hit paste. And that uh, copied our table in. Um, it's, it's a little rough, but that's okay. You can just leave it a little rough. Um, we do have a lot of stuff squeezed in here, so um, it's okay to just leave it a little rough. If you wanted to um, maybe try to make it smaller, um, you know, the, the font size is smaller, 
um, to make it fit a little better, you could do that too. Um, that would be fine. Uh, and that would look nicer. Um, but I don't want you to mess with it a lot because I want it to look like it came straight from Minitab because that gives it authenticity to say that this is not stuff that you made up, it's stuff that Minitab gave you. Um, so the less you mess with this, um, the better on the report parts. Um, and really, I ask you not to mess with it at all, but if you if you wanted to make it at least a little more legible by by um, selecting the whole thing and making the font size smaller, that's, that's fine. Let's see, um, what's the next thing that we wanna do? Um, so now we wanna do the tallies, and that's under stat tables. And this is essentially a frequency table. Um, it's called tallies. It's not exactly the same as a frequency table because it doesn't give the zero frequencies um, like a frequency table should. Um, we only want to use our quantitative. Oh, no, we want to do both variables here. We only did our quantitative variable here because you, you can't do status for histograms, um, means, um, that kind of thing. So but we want to do both here, um, and we want to do both counts and percentage. Oh, I, I need to, here. So select both, and then press select, um, and then, yeah, okay. Okay, that's how we want to do it. Um, and then that gives us this, um, and we can um, select the table and then the caret and do copy table. Um, and then uh, right here, I'm going to paste this in. Now, the thing is, it's got both the ages and the status. And in your age section, you only want the ages. In the status section, you only want the status. So what you could do is you, um, you could paste it twice. Let's go ahead and paste it twice. Um, whoops, I didn't... Uh, how did it do that? Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, now what I'm going to do is in my age section, I'm going to erase the status columns. So you see how I, I did that um, mouse to hover over status until it um, highlighted the whole thing. Then I'm just pressing delete or backspace. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the columns that correspond to the count of status and the percent of status. So that's just now age. That's age and the counts of age and the percents of age. This one, I want to get rid of age and count that's corresponding to it and the percent that's corresponding to it. And I'm left with just status. So um, that is how I can do, that That one's a little tricky because it gives you more stuff than you need. So that's how you would do that one. Uh, and then we wanna do the pie chart. So the next step is to do graph and pie chart and counts of unique values, that's what we want. So I select OK. Um, for the pie chart, we should only do, um, it, it will allow us to do the quantitative, but we don't want to do a pie chart of quantitative data. We have better measurements for quantitative data and better presentations, the histogram and the box plot for quantitative data. So we only want to do categorical variable here. Um, so we'll select that. Um, and I said to do separate graphs, but we only really, we only have one categorical variable. So it's not going to matter so much whether you select that part. All the other stuff does matter, though, and you want to do it by instructions. So, um, and then we want to do the options, and we want to do decreasing area. This, uh, this matters. And we want to select, and this definitely matters, the category name and the percent. You can do frequency if you want to, don't have to, but we definitely want the category name and we definitely want the percentage to be labeled on the chart. So then we select OK and OK. Um, 
And, oh, I should have said it in the other one, in the tallies one. But here's where we can check our spelling to make sure that we don't have two freshman categories or two sophomore or two junior or two senior. Um, so um, we could also do that with the tallies. And I clicked Navigator here to go back and forth between these. Um, and up here I have my untitled report. Um, so just everything that we've created so far, um, if you want to navigate, that's what it, why it's called Navigator, uh, navigate between them, then you can get here. So yeah, so we, we want to check these. The mini tab person will want to check these um, to make sure that all this typing is correct. And if there are two of them and they look like they're spelled exactly the same, one of them must have an extra space in there. Um, and that's a real pain to find, especially if you have a whole bunch of um, data values. Fortunately, we don't have very many here, but um, you'd have to go through each of the sophomores if there were two sophomores, um, each and every one of the sophomores to make sure that they were correct. And uh, then after the that, um, we want to do a normal probability plot. So I've done a pie chart. So um, we'll do graph and we'll do probability plot. And we want to simple, um, which is already selected, and OK. And then we want to do age and select. Um, and we, we do want it to be a normal probability plot. Um, and that we're not going to do any options on this one. So we'll just do the plot there. Of course, you will have much more values than I have. Um, but when you look at the normal probability plot, if it stays inside the three red guidelines, if all the blue dots, the blue dots represent your data values. If all the blue dots stay inside the three red guidelines, then that tells you that as far as you can tell, the data is approximately normal. Of course, mine's not, but mine, I just don't have enough doubt values to tell that it's different from normal is what it's saying. Um, so there's just not enough information to prove that it's different from normal. Um, so that's what this is saying. And then... Uh, the next thing that we want to do is our Z scores, our standardization. So I'm going to label this Z because I'm going to stick stuff in the Z scores in here. And then I'm going to do calc and standardize. I'm going to select age and I'm going to store results in Z. And it already tells exactly what you do to standardize. You subtract the mean and then you divide by the standard deviation and that's what I wanted to do so I press OK. And then it's given me the z-scores. So basically it's taken these ages and it has subtracted the mean of the ages. Remember that our mean um, was the um, 20 point uh, one six six seven so you can see the mean right there um, so we subtracted we did like 17 minus that and then divided by this this value so that's what it did to get each of these z scores and it did all of that for you isn't that nice um, and then uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to get a tally of our z scores and so we do stat um, tables like we did last time, tally. Um, this time we'll erase age and status, and I'll select, um, and I did that just with a backspace, by the way. i select the Z, and I can, you know, I only really need the counts, but if you want to leave both checked, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, and again, any of these um, that the report person wants to copy, select it first because it looks like it, the toggle button kind of disappears if you don't select it first. And then do copy table. Um, now, uh, if you can't get it, I think you can copy the whole thing. 
but usually it's much better if you can just select it and then select the toggle and then copy the table. Um, and then of course you would go and paste it in your Word um, document. And of course all of this, um, you're gonna have uh, column headed, uh, you're gonna have be following the instructions for um, you're not just going to have copied and paste stuff um, in the report, but uh, that's how that's how you do the copy and paste parts of it at least. Um, and then uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, let's see we've done that we. Okay, the last thing we want to do is we want to assume that our data is normally distributed, whether it is or not. We're going to assume that it is, and so we're going to use normal CDF. Um, and where that is found is under calculations um, and then probability distributions. And then this is CDF, Cumulative Distribution Function. That's what CDF stands for. If we wanted to do inverse CDF, um, and this is Chapter 6 stuff that I'm talking about. If you haven't watched the video for Chapter 6, you'll be like, what? What CDF? But Chapter 6 covers um, the calculator functions of normal CDF and inverse norm. Um, so this is the CDF, normal CDF function. Um, and this is the inverse CDF. Now, there is a, a normal PDF, but we don't ever use that calculator function. We do use the binome PDF function, and actually, you could do that there too, but our projects don't actually cover that. We should try to do that someday, but um, we don't currently cover that. And, and really, in this particular project, we're only going to use the normal CDF one. So I'm going to select CDF. I will look at, there we go. Um, so my Q1 is 17.75. 0.75 and I'm getting I'm getting that and all of the digits straight from my descriptive statistics that I did earlier um, and then my um, mean is 20.1667 so 20.1667 and then my standard deviation is 3.76386 Three eight six, I think. My memory is horrible. We'll look. Three eight six. Is that what it? Yeah, yeah. Three point seven six. Three eight six. Okay. Um, and I think that's all that we do for that one. I'm gonna copy that one. Okay, and then we do the same thing, um, but this time we're doing it for the um, Q3 instead of the Q1. Oh, look, it kept it. Oh, that's sweet. It, not, it used not to do that. So we do need to change the Q1 to Q3, though, and that's 23.25. Twenty-three point two five. I like that upgrade. That's nice. Um, and of course, uh, again, you know, the report person select what you want to copy. Um, select the toggle and, and copy the table. Um, and of course, you would do that for all of the functions. Um, and then, uh, you know, I did Control V, but you could also just do paste. And last but not least, and I should have said this from the beginning, um, do not walk away from your computer while you're doing this uh, because it will not save it. Um, it if you uh, it have inactivity, it will log you out um, and you'll lose everything. So, so don't, don't do that. Don't let it do that. Now, 
Um, it has like not currently saved up here um, and it has signed into a repository. That is such a pain. It is such a pain. It is such a pain. I do not recommend that at all. Um, so I recommend if you are going to walk away from your computer um, that you download. Just wherever you are, you download. And um, when you download, it doesn't give you a chance to name it. Um, I tried to name it, and maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but um, I, I guess it only lets you do that if you sign into a repository, um, but it would not let me name it. But what you can do um, is in the Finder window, and it's going to work a little different on, on a PC. It is, but you should be able to still um, maybe, maybe right-click and rename, um, and I'll go, I'll do that to um, so right click and rename now I want to leave the dot mpx there now on a PC the dot mpx might not be there and I wouldn't obsess about it um, sometimes a PC hides the file extensions so that you can't accidentally delete them but um, Macs do not hide the file so if the mpx is there you better make sure it stays there but if the dot mpx is not there I wouldn't sweat it um, and we want to name this, I think, um, project one underscore, we'll call it group three this time. Um, but you'll want to put the name of the project and the name of your group. Um, and then I'll press enter so that it'll save it. And then what I can do, um, now that it's downloaded, is I can close this out. So right here, when I um, hover over it, you got this closed, so I'll close it, and it was like, they're unsafe changes, but I downloaded it, so it's okay. If you hadn't downloaded it, and then, you know, you'd be like, well, yeah, but um, I am sure I want to leave because I have downloaded the file. And then to check to make sure that I downloaded everything correctly, I can open that file um, and see. And so I've opened that file, and it's open on the most recent thing, and um, so it's got everything. So I've got the untitled report where I put all the stuff in there and I've got my age where I have all of the um, stats for the age and the histogram and um, the other histogram, but you don't have to do two histograms, just one of them. Um, and then the uh, box plot and then I've got my um, both my tallies here and then I've got my pie chart for the ages um, and with the percentages in, in descending order and then I've got my probability plot and then I've got my tallies for my z-scores um, and I've got my two CDFs, one for the Q1 and one for the Q3 and that's it. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.